Greetings and welcome to this screencast where we're going to look at an algorithm that's very useful, very commonly used in computer science applications and cryptography called modular exponentiation. It also goes by the name of the repeated squaring algorithm. What we're going to do is compute 3 to the 200th power mod 50. This is the typical problem that this algorithm is intended to solve. We're going to be taking an integer and raising it to an integer power modulo another integer. And usually the base and the exponent of the integer that we're going to be exponentiating are both really large numbers, sometimes on the order of hundreds of digits long. So there's one way to do this that you might be wondering why we have an algorithm for this. Well, one way to do this is to simply do this in two stages. For example, first compute 3 to the 200th power by itself which will be an integer, and then simply reduce mod 50. Well, the problem with that is that 3 to the 200th power is a very large number. In fact, it has 96 decimal digits to it. That may not seem like a lot, but that is a pretty big number. And oftentimes, if you try to go to your graphing calculator, for example, and raise 3 to the 200th power, it might give you a memory overflow, because most uh, small computing devices don't have enough memory to store this. Even on some programming languages, that might force you into using some large integer libraries. And so we'd rather not do that if we possibly could get away with it. So what we're going to do is look at this algorithm that's kind of amazing. It will compute 3 to the 200th power mod 50 without computing 3 to the 200th power. And it'll do it in such a way that the numbers are all relatively small. And so this is going to be very fast, very time efficient, very space efficient. We just need to recall a couple of basic high school algebra facts before we begin here, just so we can touch base on these while we're working. First of all, if I take a base and have it raised to an exponent, say A, and let's suppose I want to square that quantity right there. What it does is it doubles the exponent. I'm going to multiply the 2 into the exponent. We're going to be repeatedly squaring things in throughout this algorithm, so that's important. The other fact we're going to need to know at the very end of this algorithm is if I have a base and it's raised to a sum of two things, like a plus b, this is the same thing as taking a x to the a times x to the b. With those two facts and a little bit of information about modular arithmetic, we can compute this 3 to the 200th power mod 50 very, very easily. So let's go and do that. So first of all, we're going to make a list here. I'm going to start over up here in the left-hand side, and I'm going to compute 3 to the first power mod 50. Now that's really easy because 3 to the first power is just 3 itself, and of course that number 3 is much less than 50, and so it's equal to 3 mod 50. Now what I'm going to do next is take this equation right here and square both sides of it. So if I take 3 squared, that's obviously equal to 9. 9 is still pretty small, so that also reduces to 9 mod 50. Any number that is less than 50 already, uh, any positive integer that's less than 50 is going to be congruent to itself mod 50. Now we're going to square again. Uh, that's, if I square 3 squared, that's going to give me 3 to the fourth power. Remember, we're going to be multiplying and doubling that exponent. So that's the same thing as taking, again, that's 3 squared squared. That's equal to 9 squared. And we all know that 9 squared is equal to 81. But now 81 is bigger than 50. And so I have to think about what is 81 congruent to mod 50. Well, for us, that just means I'm going to take 81, divide by 50, and keep the remainder. And I think you'll find that that's equal to 31 mod 50. So 3 to the 4th power is congruent to 31 mod 50. We're en route to calculating 3 to the 200th power. As you can see, the uh, exponents are starting to grow. We're going to square both sides again and compute 3 to the 8th power. 3 to the 8th power is the same as 3 to the 4th squared. Now I just calculated 3 to the 4th mod 50. That's over here. So mod 50 this is going to be equal to 31 squared mod 50 because we calculated 3 to the 4th was congruent to 31 mod 50. So I'm going to put that 31 right there and square it. Now I'm, this is a fairly small number, 31, and I can square that with a calculator pretty easily. That's uh, 31 squared is 961. And mod 50, that is equal to 11. 
Okay, so we're repeatedly squaring, starting with three to the first power, and then going to three to the second, three to the fourth, and three to the eighth, doubling the exponent every time, using the output of the, of the previous calculation, and squaring it, and then reducing mod 50. Now, the, the output of previous calculations is never gonna be larger than 50, and so these numbers that we're squaring remain pretty small. Let's keep going, and we will have three to the 16th power next. That's gonna be three to the eighth squared. Now three to the eighth, I just calculated to be 11. And so I'm gonna square 11 mod 50. Now 11 squared, again, that's a fairly small number. 11 squared is just 121. And mod 50, this is equal to 21. Okay, now we're gonna change slides here and keep going. We're gonna square again, and so three to the 16th squared is three to the 32nd power, okay, three to the 16th squared. Now I had just calculated three to the 16th mod 50 to be 21, because this is 21 squared mod 50. 21 again is a pretty small number, and so I can square it directly and find that that's equal to 441 mod 50. And mod 50, that is equal to just a plain 41. Let's keep going, because I see the uh, exponents here are starting to grow exponentially, right? They're going from one to two to four to eight to 16 to 32. I think we're gonna hit 200 pretty quickly here. Let's see. So three to the 64th power would be next. That's three to the 32nd power, sorry, 32nd power squared. Three to the 32nd power is 41 mod 50. So this is the same as squaring 41 mod 50. 41 squared is a small number. 41 itself is a small number, and so 41 squared uh, turns out to be 1681. And I'm still looking at this mod 50. And mod 50, that's equal to 31. You might remember that we actually came up with 31 a little earlier, so maybe I can recycle some, some calculations. Doubling the exponent again by squaring, I would get three to the 128th power. This is three to the 64th squared. Now three to the 64th, again, I just calculated to be 31. So I can replace those two things. Again, this is what I'm doing every single time, just replacing those uh, values. Computing this mod 50. Again, 31 is a small number, just two digits. So that's 961. And mod 50, that's equal to 11 again. Now, here's where the algorithm is gonna come to a stop. And the reason it comes to a stop is that the next squaring process would double my exponent again to get me to three to the 256. But that 256 is larger than my target exponent of 200. So once my exponent, which has been doubling all this time, exceeds the exponent that I'm trying to reach, I'm going to call the proceedings to a halt. Okay, at least call the uh, uh, squaring proceedings to a halt. Okay, so let's summarize what we've learned so far. Through this repeated squaring technique, we've gotten the powers of three for the exponents doubling every time. Three to the first, three to the second, three to the fourth, three to the eighth, three to the sixteenth, all the way up through three to the 128th power. Just notice that all those exponents, one, two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on, are powers of two, and that's no uh, coincidence. And so that's in the blue here on the second line here, you see what those powers are equal to mod 50. Now we're trying to calculate three to the 200th power mod 50. One almost final step we're gonna do here is think about what is the binary expansion, the binary base two representation for the number 200, okay? I'm not gonna calculate that for you from scratch here, but you can use uh, whatever algorithm you have, whatever technology you have, and find out that that is one, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Now what that means is that 200 can be written as the following sum of powers of two. That means that 200 is equal to, and just to count up, this is the, here's the, the, the ones place, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So that means that 200 is equal to 128 plus 64, plus eight. That's how we would get that binary expansion. With that binary expansion, we can now finally get to our answer of what is three to the 200th mod 50. And here's how we're gonna do it. 
we're going to first write 3 to the 200th. That's what we're interested in. And now I'm going to replace the 200 up here with the sum of the powers of 2 that it's equal to. So this is 3 to the following power, 128 plus 64 plus 8. Now remember from earlier we said we had a basic exponent fact that says when I have the same base and there's a bunch of addition in the exponents, what that means is that I can rewrite that as multiplication, like so, 3 to the 128th times 3 to the 64th times 3 to the 8th. Now, I just want to have you look up at that top row here. We know what 3 to the 128th power is mod 50. We know what 3 to the 64th power is mod 50. And we know what 3 to the 8th power mod 50 is. And so now, if I were to uh, replace these three factors here, this 3, that 3, and that 3, with, with what they are equal to mod 50, it would go like this. This is 11 times 31 times 11 mod 50. I'm being a little sloppy with the notation here because this is a true equality, that is a true equality, this is only true if I am looking at this side mod 50 as well. Okay, so now look at what I have on the far right hand side. I have three small numbers to calculate together. Multiplying three small numbers together, two digit numbers together, is nothing to a computer. That's equal to 3,751. And finally, last step here, if I reduce 3,751 mod 50, I get 1. And so that is what 3 to the 200th power mod 50 is equal to.